Hello Internet, my name is Zero, and today, rather than running from monsters and cussing them out, we're gonna conquer a bit of fear and try dating some of them. I think. I, I barely know what this game's about. My only assumption is it's a monster dating sim. That's literally all I got going for it. Uh, voice interjections, yay or nay? Awesome voice effects. Make your own voices, no effects. So is it basically asking, do I want voice acting or do I not want voice acting? Because I'd rather go with voice acting. But not having voice acting would mean I could make the voices. That's a tough choice. I'm gonna go with voices. What the fuck? Two players? Uh... One player, cause I'm lonely. <laughs> oh, first term, classic. Second term, DLC. I'm gonna go with classic. Full game, around 60 minutes. Short game, around 30 minutes. Ooh. Do I wanna do short game or do I want full game? Short game, full game, short game, full game. Uh, do I have a coin? I don't have a coin. Fuck. Oh wait, I do have a coin! Heads, short game, tails, full game. Alright, short game it is. What the fuck? Again? Seriously? The shit? Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Ooh. Oh, I like the big zombie dude. I like the cute little Franken girl. Oh, uh, but I'm gonna have to go with this guy because I like his whole like shadow aesthetic. Name, yellow. Uh, Oz, custom name. Let's go with Uh, where are the... There it is. Let's just go with my usual name. And, you know what? Maybe I'll play the game where I got this title from. Okay. He. He. She. They. I am a man. Alright. What? Is that my voice? And we had yet to experience this ultimate challenge. The monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Oh, she's pretty. Miranda Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt? Yeah, Vanderbilt. 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal? What? <laughs> Damien Lavie. 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. <laughs> Scott Howe. 21. A werewolf athlete who... What the fuck? Hold up. Is my shit stuck? No, it's not. A werewolf athlete with who compensates for his rather small print with a stupidly huge heart. Aww. Alright. Liam DeLioncourt. 400 something, I don't know. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Oh, I like her. Polly Geist. Oh, Polly Geist. Poltergeist. I get it. 
a pretty ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? 22, questionably. And Vera O... O... Berlin. O Berlin. 23, my age. A mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart? But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I'm gonna try and win the ghost girl's heart. She's pretty, I like her. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Okay, I'm being loud as fuck because the music is loud in my ears. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to disguise which kind of deviant sicko you are. What the fuck? Okay, monster prom stupidest pop quiz ever. Trademark. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. What the fuck? This way, each of you will start by having stats that will better reflect your true selves. Let's start. School is outdated and lame. We are our new school subject ASAP. Turning people into our puppets through emotional warfare and deception 101. How to correctly punch a crocodile without terrible consequences. Critical thought. I mean, damn. This country could really use a subject like that in schools. What? I'd rather learn how to punch a crocodile in the face! So bold, so smart. Coolest reality show would be eight rich people fight in weekly challenges to see who the best who's the best at giving money to you. So Mr. Beast Battle Royale. People in position of power must face all sorts of questions relevant to their field, and if they fail, they lose their job and society wins. That, that would actually be kind of cool. I mean, interesting, but I don't think I would catch myself watching it. Twelve experts on the various arts of seduction live in a house where they must face a common challenge. Seducing a potato into marriage somehow. I'd rather see eight rich people fight. So wealthy. Uh, if you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Rainbows and gummy bears. Double creamed... Tequila and Coke. Uh, spicy chocolate. No. Chocolate on fire. That speaks to me more than this. 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 And this. Aw, oh, man. Oh, no. I didn't woo Ghost Girl with that one. Fuck. I wooed the demon. That yeah, makes sense. Of course I'd woo the demon. My love life is hell. God. Oh, uh, please don't tell me this is gonna be the same thing as Surgeon Simulator where the loading screen takes forever. I don't wanna put oh wait, never mind. Oh alright. Okay. Uh. Oh, wait. 
auditorium, class, library, outdoors, gym, bathrooms. I think I rather go. Okay, so if I'm thinking myself in high school, what I did in high school was just so I could get out of high school. But what I would want to do. Either auditorium or outside. I'm gonna go outside. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates, how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun, hell yeah. Suddenly a chill runs through you as the very fabric of reality is in danger. Scanning your surroundings, you quickly discover the reason of the feeling. Polly and Damien are together. They're bored. Hi. Damien? Damien? Damien! What? I must have fallen asleep for a second because nothing is on fire. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Nothing crazy has happened in the last 47 minutes. I am dead. And I'm dead. I mean, I'm, I am literally actually dead, but also I am dead because of how bored I am. What if we just... Oh, fuck! I'm so bored I can't even think of something to do to not be bored. No, help us somebody, please. Cause a sexy problem. <laughs> what the fuck? Break into the seven seals and release Kralak the world picture <laughs> send in the party goblins yeah I'm not gonna fucking destroy the fabric of reality you call up every party goblin you know and in a few minutes the whole school is full of them they bring their party hats their kegs and cheap beer and their illegal fireworks Damien gets into a friendly fist fight with 12 goblins while Polly poses for the goblins gone wild. Oh, the party leaves nine dead, hundred, hundreds wounded, and your two friends completely satisfied. You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Oh my god. Uh, where do I sit? Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I'll definitely sit here. Yeah, I'll sit here because I'm trying to woos. Woos. I'm trying to woo Polly. You arrive at your chosen table to find Damien up dejectedly hefting a ball of mashed potatoes. While Polly sadly poses her hand, passes her hand through the same. Oh, seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly don't know. I tried throwing potatoes at people, yelling food fight, but I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture. Sure, but not food. There's got to be a way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. But we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot. That's it. We'll set the cafeteria on fire. Wait, nope. That's not the solution. That just 
That's just arson. Why do I always jump straight to arson? Oh, at least he's self-aware. I fucking love it. Oh my god. It's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves. So you step in with an idea of your own. Wars are fought over sacred reservoirs. Steal everybody's food and put it in a pile. That ought to do it. Hey, Polly, you know that the Greeks fought a whole war over Helen of Troy's face? Really? Is that true? We just need you to get kidnapped by the Trojans. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's basically me saying she's so pretty, I'd go to war for her. Hell yeah, I'm gonna say that. I like where your head is, but I'm not super into being kidnapped and shit. What if we skip some steps with some good old bash? Wait, what? What did it say? Polly floats up into the table and then in a practiced motion, whips her t <laughs> to the victor! This is the school cafeteria. Polly, Polly's rash actions upsets the roiling... Oh my god. The roiling cauldron of hormones set it on fire and tap dance on the ruins, Jesus Christ. Soon the air is thick with sausage and gravy, potato crisps flying everywhere like flavored shrapnel. Holy shit. Polly puts her shirt back on. Now that everyone's too busy fighting to remember what they're fighting about, looks like mine are really worth it. That launched a thousand chips. The view just got. The view you just got makes that pun worth it. Dude, I got a food fight started and I saw some knockers. Alright. Huh? What's this? Jim? What's going on here? Hey, stranger. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures. Even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. What the fuck? Blanket with two holes. Uh, how do I buy shit? I only have seven dollars. Yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It is not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. Uh, big badass tattoo. A gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, I'm wise to know when a gift needs giving. What is this? Online encyclopedia. A little Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. How much are those? Five dollars. Night station. What the fuck? A PR agent? What? Sexy fake Latin accent. <laughs> what? A penguin mask. I'm gonna go with the sheet with holes in it. Have a good one. Okay, I guess. I don't know why I felt the ghost sheet would be needed. Uh, where do I wanna go? She's probably gonna be outdoors or in the auditorium. Okay, uh, you're talking to Juan, the small magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you won't even 
be as fun as Bob, the scary clown. Why do I want to be like Bob? You accept the challenge. You go straight to Bob. Stab him several times. Open his bleeding chest and eat some of his guts in order to consume its blood. Really? Do you think that's how it works? Oh, it is. You gain too fun from poor Bob. Oh, God. I mean, he's a serial killer. Am I really that... Do I really feel that bad? You spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. It seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. You wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst and also most likely tied to the disappearance of Mars Argo. <gasps> oh, what's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student? Yeah. What are you talking about? <gasps> I didn't see you there. Oh, so ghostly. You guys are joking, right? That is clearly just Zero wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam. You don't see anyone saying, Oh, Liam is really just Zero wearing a blanket with eye holes. Exactly, Liam. Even despite the many times we suspected so. It was so. What? Oh, sorry, little ghost. We were just ignoring you. <laughs> That's true. Tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, yes. Divulge. Divulge. Basically, ghost knowledge. Main power is levitating stuff. Ultimate ghost prank. Haunt someone to despair. So fun. You spot a victim for your prank, the covet. You start running in their direction while screaming your best boo to date. What's this? Maybe it's a minion of Queen Nophilia? Rumors say she's preparing to be the big bad of next season. Stop booing at us. It's hard enough to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing! This school is unbelievable. Ah! They go running looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Whoa, that ghost clearly haunted them. And they have fought against all kinds of evil creatures. Such a powerful ghost, so cool! He just ran at them while booing. I could literally do that. Yet you didn't do it, Liam. Therefore, you're not a ghost. You're just jealous. Yeah, of this very powerful ghost. Ghost we respect. Ghost, we respect your ghost powers, and we wish you the best on your ghost adventures. You leave running and booing before they realize how obvious that you're just... Yeah, you're just you with a blanket. Today, you gain two boldness and plus one smarts. Okay. I've been at this for 24 minutes. All right. Okay, so I'm really just trying to woo uh, Ghost Girl. You arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating... Wait, both of them? Oh, yum, yum. I sure do love food and eating. Look at all the food go in me. Hmm. Yes, this cafeteria is Sloppy Joe truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity. A well-dressed businesswoman sitting at the next table watching both women intensely. 
Oh yeah, I know you like this, baby. My eating is realistic and erotic? What the fuck? Be cool, Polly. The man wants to pay us for eating in front of him. Not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman shyly approaches you and gives you a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable confidant to fulfill my rather unusual pattern. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-haired one possesses a certain grace. Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was going to do anyway. And the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. In your opinion, the businesswoman, the businessman finishes, which would be the wiser choice on my part? I'd say ghost. <laughs> the businessman nods thoughtfully. You know, you're right. Never before have I believed so fully that someone was actually eating real food. Yep, that's me eating real food with my real mouth and teeth. Are you kidding me? That's convincing to you? The food is falling right through her body onto the floor. Don't hate me just because I'm efficient at eating. Don't worry, I hate you for other, more private reasons. What? Sorry, can't hear you. What? Sorry, can't hear you. Too busy eating real food. You team up with Polly to make her eating even more realistic. She passes her food through her body to you, and you eat it for her. It's pretty hot. What the fuck? Oh my god, this is the weirdest right. fucking high school. Uh, bathrooms? I feel like they would be in the classroom to pull a That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain two smarts. Oh. Then you realize you're feeling like going full ghost with your blanket again. You're observing your surroundings when you spot Miranda and Damien. Aw, oh, man. You're about to get closer when suddenly... Greetings, my loves. What the fu Who are you? Greetings, beautiful high schoolers. It is I, the Interdimensional Prince. I'm here to rescue you from your mundane existence. Just sign these marriage papers. Not this guy again. I love this jacket. That looks badass. Look! Whoa! An underworld specter? This again? What again? We have, this is clearly a kick-ass powerful ghost. Look at its face. So dampened. No expression at all. That's because it's not a face. It's a sheet with two holes cut in it. Man, I wish my face had two holes cut in it. That would be fucking metal. No, listen. It's not a face. It's... Ghost friend, help us. Save us from the interdimensional creep. Yeah, do something. Something ghostly. I fucking love it. Throw a rock at the interdimensional prince. Fuck yeah. Ouch! 
Inappropriate. The only violence I tolerate is the violence of love when a man forces his pure love into his non mutual love. What the fuck? That and the violence imposed by my army, usually alongside the former type of violence. I will be back for you, my young lovers. What the fuck? And so he retreats into his dimension. Superb! Metal, that ghost just beat the prince with his ghost powers. He just threw a rock at him. Dude, pay attention. It clearly was a ghost rock. What's the difference between a rock and a ghost rock? One is a rock. Oh, God, I choked on my own select. One is a rock. The other is a ghost rock. You do realize you didn't answer my question, right? Ghost rock! Huzzah! Yeah, throwing a rock at your problems like a champ. You gain plus two fun and plus one boldness. God, my eyes water like hell. Alright. Uh, let's go bathrooms. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect your no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms, you give no shits and gain two boldness. In the middle of everything, a portal opens and you and swallows Burrow, Polly, and Liam. You dive into the rescue to rescue them and straight into the season final of Interdimensional Bachelor. <sighs> Good lord. Help, I'm in danger of spraining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Yes! Oh my god, we're on a game show. Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial... I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my... I'm gonna win. I don't even care what the prize is. You're what? Your wife? What a revolting promise. Premise. So you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios. Our answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you. That's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a... Audrey dating game? Everybody stop raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question. That's the spirit. Question number one. Describe your ideal marriage proposal. But before Polly can answer, you buzz yourself. Now's your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince back. Jaw unhinges bees pour out. What the fuck? I'd present you with a grandmother's wedding ring. Still attached to that. To my naked grandma? What the fuck? Okay, that's just gonna make me sound like a weirdo. But that also sounds funny as fuck. You'd give me your own grandmother as an engagement gift? How heartless. Do you really take your family that much for granted? What do you... Do you have piles of grandmothers <laughs> cluttering your house? And why is she naked? Did she consent to this? Or are you stripping your grandmother naked and trading her and her jewelry for a sham marriage? I resent the implication that a marriage to me would be a sham, but otherwise I agree. Next contestant, ideal proposal go. 
Ooh, suicide pack, suicide pack. I do the thing where I drop the ring in the champagne glass, except instead of a ring, it's poison. That's so romantic. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's take a commercial break and be back after these messages. The prince apparently got into suicide pacts, kicks you out of his dimension, and vanishes. Technically, you accomplish your goal, but now all your friends think you're a grandma abuser. You lose two fun in one charm. Ah, damn it! I should have gone with the bees! All right. Oh god, I really gotta make up for that. I see Polly right there. Polly and Miranda sit together surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd of serfs. Whoa! So wait, you're actually you've actually got serfs who eat for you? Uh, disgraceful! Well of course I find eating to be terribly undignified, so I almost never do it. Hey, me neither. What other kinds of crazy surfs have you got? Well, I have a surf to go to the bathroom for me, a surf to experience difficult emotions for me, and a surf for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. What? I even have a surf, a surfing surf, for standing on top of whenever I go surfing. Wow, that's a lot of surfs. It's a fair amount. The only limit is my imagination. Unfortunately, my imagination surf imagined a way to escape from surfdom, so now I'm all out of ideas. Well, I'm sure with the help of Zero, we could probably think of dope new kinds of surf. Oh! Is that so? I can't wait! Well, you're on the spot now. What will it be? Oh my god, my eye is watering like hell. Oh, Miranda, you should get a puppy surf. It's not actually a surf, it's just like 50 cute dogs. You should get a party surf, Polly. A surf to experience your hangovers for you. Fuck yeah! A surf for me? I couldn't possibly. Why not? I do it all the time. But isn't it wrong to make someone else experience the negative consequences of your actions? Well, like I said, I do it all the time. And father says I can do no wrong. Therefore, it's probably fine. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. Let's hire a dude to deal with all my withdrawal symptoms. Oh god. Hire? Polly, dearest, we don't pay our serfs. We don't? Sweet deal! Polly hires the burliest hangover surf she can find, and the two of you go out for the night of your lives. The surf is dead in the morning from the epic hangover. But the memories are well worth the second degree man slaughter. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I just killed an innocent man. Alright. Uh I let's try going outdoors at night. Hey, okay, half hour grave. Alright. Oh wait, I- fuck, shit! But you decide to go all in and pretend it's a new dance move? Apparently called the Groovy Musaka? Juan looks at you and he asks you to teach him the Groovy Musaka. Alright, in no time half the party is following your steps enjoying the Groovy Musaka all together. It's a party to remember. You gain plus two fun and a cool story to tell your grandkids someday. You could start doing something productive. 
or you could put your blanket and get up to some good old ghost shenanigans. God, what is with me in the fucking ghost shenanigans? Oh, I probably shouldn't have bought that stupid thing. You're looking for someone, but you run into the person that might finally see through your ghostly deception. Apart from boring Leo. No fucking way! Wait, what's this? Another ghost? No, I can't believe this. Finally, somebody else notices. This is clearly just Zero wearing up. I can't believe it's bec because it's just too cool to be true. Come on, it's not cool nor true. Shh, Liam, I can't hear our cool new ghost friend over your jealousy. So tell me, how did you die? We have to share so much ghost gossip. Or ghost sip? As I like to call it. Hmm, good question. Time to improve the lie with another bigger lie! I was offered to, as a sacrifice to the god of party! Fuck yeah, that's awesome. I only tell how I died to th on the third date. Boo, ghost wink. Oh, should I do that? That's a charm. What? Ah, oh, that's probably just a big lie. I bet you're just some idiot who decided to wear a blanket to imitate a ghost. Finally! Then you died in a stupid way like asphyxiation under the blanket. And then you were cursed for dying in such a stupid way that the ironic punishment of having to wander the world under the that's very realistic, customer. You are literally a ghost. You know what ghosts are supposed to look like. I know what this sexy ghost looks like right now. Disappointed. Bye. And she faces out. Wow. I should have gone with the sacrifice to party. I swear, you're making my life miserable, you blanket-wearing moron. Your life is miserable now. You've totally lost two fun and one charm. I just got my two fun back! Oh my god, how high is my fun? It's 10. Who will you ask to prompt? It's obvious who I'm asking. I'm asking hey, Polly. Ask Polly to the prompt? Yes. All right. Hey, boo. Prom? Nah. Ghost on ghost is like super vanilla. I have enough ghost with myself. If you were something else, maybe like a zombie or... Jin or a Frankenstein's monster? Or a very... Or the very concept of fear? But no, you're clearly a very realistic ghost, just like me. Wait, you actually are one of those things. Polly out. And she phased out before you can take off your stupid blanket. God damn it! No way, boo! Prom night sucks. Why did you decide to ask anyone to prom while wearing a blanket? <laughs> oh, I know! Oh, this sucks. You pretend to be a ghost, yet you're the one haunted by the ghosts of your failure. <laughs> Boo. Oh, bro, that sucked. Man. Eight out of 421 events? Zero out of 34 endings? Eight out of 15... That... 1510 different outcomes. Holy fuck. And then I also have new secret endings, none. New events, none. Or no, eight. New outcomes, eight. Most likely to rest guard the space goddess of illusion in disguise. 
Macaulay's quote. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but what does kill you makes you a sweet kick-ass ghost. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. That... Oh, cool. Are these the credits? Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. Oh, my God. Where am I? Wait. Polly's not in it. Oh, no, wait, there she is. Yeah, I see her. All right. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like, it always does. Life happened, and it was wonderful. Polly's drug cooking skills proved useful, and she became a chemist for a... Oh my god. Pharmaceutical industry. Wow, that's fucking crazy. But in her free time, she still cooks the real shit. Her greatest invention so far are watermelon flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. Miranda used her vast knowledge of surfs to get a job and hand picking the best surfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her serfs to do the work. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said, adult life would put that mean bitch in her place. But you know what? Vera ended up making adult life her own bitch. God damn. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life. And then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Palm might have ended them. But there were plenty of battles left that were... That were... War called youth. Okay. But once again, we were young and unafraid. And we were really and we were ready to start. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> I like this song. Oh wait, he's a zombie. Is that Slenderman reference right there? Is that a fucking ritual dagger? <laughs> I like this. This was a fun game. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll play the DLC later. I don't know yet, you guys. Wait, why are you at the pool of cave water? <laughs> That's the Frankenstein girl as a knight. I really like this. I don't want to skip the credits because I like to stick the whole pictures in Polaroid form. Alright. Oh, it's, it's me with Polly there. That's awesome. Thanks for playing. That was actually much quicker than I thought it would be. I kind of want to do the hour-long version. What the fuck? Okay. Unlock Dragon Heat. What the fuck? We just unlocked an erotic fanfiction about dragons. This is about to get weird. Okay. Unlock. You have unlocked eight new images in the gallery. Okay, that's cool. I kind of want to check them out. Uh, unless this was regrettable. Okay, her. This one. Okay. Well, 
art. Okay, all these, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, these are ones. Oh, these are all really cool. Oh, I unlocked these. That's cool. Sonas. Huh. These are all really cool. I like the way Damien looks in this. He looks awesome. Oh, wait. I'm assuming these are monster sonas of people that worked on the game. That's Ollie. And that's some four armed skeleton. That's a creepy puppet. That dude was in the game. That's a dragon. That cat girl was in the game. Frankenstein girl was in the game. That ram dude. Manticore dude. I don't know what he is. Alright, so if you guys like this video, make sure to leave likes on it. If it's like, I don't know if it's more than like five views. Actually, no, if it's more than 20 views before the end of the week, I'll probably do another one. Probably. But if you guys enjoyed it, just make sure to leave a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe because I try to make video games. Video games. I try to make videos as often as possible. And as always, stay awesome, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.